Greetings. I'm Darmesh from HubSpot. And I've been getting this question a lot recently from friends and family, which is, have you tried out ChatGPT? And the first thought that pops into my head is, do you even know me? Of course I've tried out ChatGPT, along with a hundred million other people. ChatGPT from OpenAI has been the fastest growing product ever, going from zero to a hundred million users in just two months. Now, I'm even more excited than the average person about ChatGPT. And the reason is it makes possible something I've been obsessed with and passionate about forever, which is Chat UX. Chat UX is the ability to put a natural language chat interface on software. So traditionally, when we build software, we take what engineers would call an imperative approach. You go through this step-by-step -step process, the user clicks here, drags there, clicks that, touches this, swipes that. At the end of a series of steps, they get the outcome they were looking for, which is, let's say, a report. Now, with the power of a generative AI in ChatGPT, we can take a declarative approach. So we can just say, as humans, here's the thing I want. AI does all the work, and we just get the outcome we were looking for. We can kind of skip to the end. So based on this excitement around generative AI and ChatGPT, uh, I've been cranking away with the HubSpot team uh, on an app called ChatSpot um, and I'd like to show it to you. And before we jump in, here's sort of how ChatSpot works. Uh, it takes a natural language query in, just like ChatGPT, uh, and then using the power of ChatGPT and the HubSpot CRM and Dolly2 and Google Docs and keyword research and a bunch of other things, it actually then does something with your natural language query and boom, it gives you the outcome you are looking for. So that's the idea. So rather than trying to kind of explain it further, let's just jump in and do a demo. Now I'm going to show you three buckets of use cases in ChatSpot. We're going to start with sales and CRM use cases. Then we're going to do some reporting use cases. And then we're going to do some marketing use cases. So let's jump into the demo. So I'm going to go over here to um, our uh, ChatSpot homepage, which lives at chatspot.ai. Just a couple of quick notes. Um, I am here in the HS demo account, so all the data we're looking at is made up. It's fictional. And we have the nice alpha label on uh, chatspot, just so you know, this is very early software. All right, so let's just uh, jump right in. Here is the chat interface uh, for chatspot. And along the left here, we have some suggested prompts, uh, but we're just going to start typing things in. So let's say, how many contacts are there? So here, um, ChatSpot's going to take that query. It's going to figure out what we're asking. It's going to talk to the HubSpot API and come back with an answer, which it did, which is 15,603 contacts in the HubSpot CRM. All right. So now let's say I want to uh, add a contact. Add contact, Ada74 at lovelace.com. That's Ada Lovelace. Uh, we'll say 314 scientific way, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 02141, and follow up in four days. Now, this is something I could have done in the HubSpot CRM. I could have gone to the Contacts app, clicked the Add Contact button, found the right properties for address, then gone to add a task, pick date four days out, and add the task. But instead of that series of 20 plus clicks, we were able to do it in one simple prompt in natural language. And you'll see that it parsed all this information out. Um, and we can look at this information in HubSpot. So here's the HubSpot CRM. We see that Ada Lovelace, it was even recapitalized correctly. Uh, I parsed the address. Uh, here's a task assigned to me four days out. So other things you can do, uh, sales related, is we can research a company. So you know, I happen to mention a company called uh, OpenAI. So we can say research company openai.com or I could have said openai and it comes back with some high level information how many employees when it was founded the description of what they do where they're based the Twitter link and the LinkedIn profile uh, all in a convenient spot um, and we'll be fleshing this out as, as openai I mean as chatspot gets better alright now this is good if you know which company you're looking for right you can do research on it 
But what if you don't? What if you're prospecting for companies? You're looking for potential customers uh, based on the geo you're in or the industry you're in. You can do something like find companies. So we're going to do find, let's say, SaaS companies. We'll start there uh, in Massachusetts uh, with over a thousand employees. So now knows what a SaaS company is. Knows we're talking about companies with over the, a thousand employees. So I can come here. Uh, HubSpot's obviously on the list, uh, as is Toast, another uh, local Boston area SaaS company. Uh, once we see a company that's of interest, we can do that same research and just do a lookup, see information about the company, and then with one click, we can just add that company uh, to HubSpot. Okay. So that was us uh, looking up companies and um, you know, adding contacts and things like that. Now let's, uh, we're still in sales, uh, so let's, let's do something... Uh, slightly more fancy here. So let's say I'm going to, uh, I want to write an email, which uh, obviously salespeople and founders and execs do all the time. And what we're going to do is we're going to draft an email. And one thing that ChatGPT is really, really good at is is writing. It's amazing how well it does. Uh, but what we do is make it even better. So based on the email address, bh at hubspot.com, we're going to pull contextual information about Brian. Everything we know in the CRM, everything we know from uh, research, we know the location, we know the title, we know what company he works for. And it knows everything about me and HubSpot because it's chat GPT. All right. So uh, we're just going to read this real quick. Uh, not all of it. it. says, as the executive chairman of HubSpot, you know better than anyone the importance of leveraging technology to help businesses grow. So this is a really, really good, in my opinion, first draft. And I trained this particular model on you know, well-performing kind of outreach emails um, you know, based on our own sales team and, and feedback. So anyway... Um, so I think this is a really great start. Now, if we like uh, this particular email, we can just hit this one button, it copies it to the clipboard, and we can either paste it into Gmail or Outlook, or we can paste it into a HubSpot sales sequence if we wanted to make it part of a sales sequence. All right, so that's kind of the sales and CRM use cases. Uh, now let's kind of shift into reporting. So let's create a report of um, companies added in Q4. Uh, group by country. Let's say we're going to walk into a meeting. We're talking about geofocus and what locations and what countries are our customers and leads coming from. Uh, and it comes back with a nice table of the countries and the number of companies from those countries added in Q4. Um, and we can check up here. And it knows what Q4 means, which is it was uh, you know from October through December 31st. Of, of last year, and it found like, 243 such countries. Uh, but now here's where it gets interesting. So this information is natively in the HubSpot CRM, right? We didn't have to do anything uh, particularly fancy. But as I mentioned earlier, we also have the power of ChatGPT. So we can say update report and only include countries in South America, right? Now this is you know, not part of most reporting tools, but ChatGPT knows what South America is and what Latin America is and what ENIA is and all those things, right? Uh, so it comes back with a list of uh, here are the countries and regions that are in South America and the number of companies we added for each. So that's a nice thing. Uh, let's do one more ChatGPT powered thing. We'll say um, add column for country population. Now, once again, um, you know, the CRM doesn't know the population of all these countries, but ChatGPT does. We can intersect the data set we have with additional information that ChatGPT has, you know, as of 2021 until they uh, update the model. But uh, but that's pretty cool. So any, anytime you kind of bring a report back, uh, you can intersect that report um, based on countries or industries or whatever with information that ChatGPT knows, which is pretty much everything that's on the web. All right, so that's cool. So we uh, generated this report now. One of the nice things and most powerful things um, and most useful things about ChatSpot is that once you get information as you know resulting from a prompt, you can do a lot of different things with it. For instance, uh, you can say, you know what, uh, I like this information, send me that as an email. If it'll take that exact same thing, it'll actually drop it into my email inbox so then I can kind of forward to someone, I can chat an email, start an email discussion around uh, a, a particular output. So that's in my email inbox now. Uh, but let's say I'm interested not in just getting a one-time email. I want to get updates monthly. By the way, if you're wondering, like, why do I keep, like, saying the things that I'm typing? It's not I'm trying to insult your intelligence. I know I know you can read, but this helps me with my kind of inner dialogue that I have, the inner monologue, uh, which is like, Darmesh, you're doing fine. Darmesh, it's okay if you have to redo it and take a 47th take. Um, but I digress, but that's why I'm kind of 
saying the, the prompts to myself um, or to you as as uh, as I'm going. Anyway, carrying on. So we sent it via email. We got it as a monthly update. Another cool thing. So let's say we we like this data. Now that's great, but we want it in a uh, a Google Sheet. So instead of downloading it as a CSV and then uploading it into Google. Uh, we kind of skip all those steps and it just comes back with the same data and with one click access, I have that same data as a Google Sheet. Or I can say, hey, you know what? I'm actually walking into a meeting. Um, so instead of a Google Sheet, give me that as a Google Slide. Actually, give us a full report as a Google Slide. And we open that in Google Slides and then we can format it however we choose if we drag and drop it into um, into a Google Deck. Okay. So once you get information, once again, it's not just reporting, it's across the entire uh, entire application. You can send it to yourself. You can get updates on it, um, you know, daily, monthly, weekly, quarterly, whatever it is. Uh, you can get it as a sheet, get it as a slide, um, however you choose. Okay, so let's carry on the theme of reporting um, and let's ask a simple atomic question, which is how much revenue did we make in uh, make last month, let's say. So now what's interesting here is it knows that revenue um, kind of ties back the deal object in the HubSpot CRM, and it looks at the amount property on the deal object, adds them all up for last month, uh, and comes back with the answer of $10 million, um, and, and change. Okay, so that's cool, but how, what about a question like um, how many or who were the top five reps last month? So who are our top five sales reps? It knows what our rep is, and that means sales rep or account manager, account executive, whatever you call them. We want the top five, and we want them for last month. So it's going to go generate a report. Um, based on that information, we'll see that um, it picked up the correct dates because we said last month, uh, recording this uh, in the beginning of March. So now one thing you can do that's cool with reports is you can say, hey, I want, to, uh, I want that report inside of HubSpot. So I can save report as uh, top sales recs last month that's the name of the report and what this is going to do is super cool it's going to actually create that report inside of the hubspot crm um, and so i will click on the view report button and you will see that it takes us straight into the hubspot crm straight into the report builder sets the correct date range it gives us the the data we were looking for and now i can click on customize and use the full power of the hubspot report builder which is super cool and I can do anything I could have done with any other report. I can add it to a dashboard. I can uh, apply it to a particular team. I can restrict it and control who has access to it. All the things that uh, the HubSpot reporting um, app provides. So that's super cool. All right. So now uh lost my place here. Let's go back to ChatSpot. All right. So those were the reporting use cases. Now let's kind of shift mindsets and let's, uh, let's look at some marketing related things. Uh, we'll start off with a simple... Analytics prompt. I'm going to pick one from the suggested ones here, uh, which is uh, show monthly summary of web visits for last year. So this has access to all the analytics data that's in HubSpot around web visits and conversions and leads and customers and all those things. Uh, and it gives back that data. I can click a single button and get that as a bar chart. And it gives that to me as a bar chart, uh, which is fun. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, now let's say we're Let's say I'm a marketer at HubSpot, um, and I'm curious as to what keywords HubSpot is ranking for organically. So I can ask, what keywords is HubSpot.com ranking for? So now after I look at keyword research data, pull the information in real time, come back and say, here are some of the keywords that are you know, high, high value keywords for HubSpot. It tells us uh, how much search volume we're getting. So if we look, uh, let's say we look at this Instagram one, uh, it's got 30 million plus uh, search volume, and we rank number 17. Uh, good, not great. Uh, and the CPC is six dollars and 39 cents. If I click on this link, it actually takes me to the web page uh, within the HubSpot website that ranks for the term Instagram marketing. So now, let's say as a marketer, HubSpot, I want to write a blog post about Instagram and see if we can't improve on that uh, number 17 ranking. And the way I might do that is I'm going to do a I'm going to draft a blog post about the impact of generative AI on Instagram marketing. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that ChatGPT is great at is writing. Right now, we took a simple prompt here. My idea is 
I want to take something that we know is popular, and everyone knows what Instagram is, and intersect it with something new, which is a new and trendy, which is this generative AI stuff, pull the two things together, um, and write a blog post. Now, it does a really good job. You're probably not going to want to like directly publish the thing that it out outputs, uh, but you can iterate. You can kind of modify that prompt. You can uh, describe how long you want it to be and what style you want it to be. Um, it comes back. But let's say we're happy with this post uh, as it exists. We're going to just put it inside of HubSpot, not publish it, just save it as a draft inside of HubSpot. We could have also saved it in a Google Doc, and I'm going to click on View in HubSpot. And it gives me that article uh, in HubSpot, and I can come in here and I can edit it, um, just like I would any other blog post in the HubSpot CMS. Okay. Now, as any good marketer knows, um, a blog post is really not complete until you have an image, uh, because images make the posts do better, um, and they're much more engaging and social and things like that. So let's say we want to generate an image. We're going to generate an image of um, a retro phone. And the reason is I'm trying to draw this contrast between the cutting edge, which is generative AI, and classic old school phones, and, um, and Instagram is a phone photo-taking app. All right. Um, so it came back with uh, this nice image of a retro phone. Now you'll notice that this is in kind of like a pencil sketch style. Um, and you might be wondering, well, why is it? Why did it pick that of all the possible things it could have picked? And the reason is in ChatSpot, we have this visual style library, right? So we have a bunch of different styles. These are all images of John Lennon. Uh, I'm a John Lennon fan. And, uh, and we can pick them. So the one we just have highlighted, that's the one I'm currently doing, is, is pencil drawing. But let's say we change that. Let's say, um, just for fun, we want to do a Salvador Dali style um, style image. So we pick that, go back, and I'm going to resubmit that same prompt, which I can do by clicking on the edit icon and then just hitting the send. And so now we're going to get an image of uh, a retro phone done in the style of Salvador Dali. Uh, we can click on that image. We can see, and that's pretty good, I I'd say. Um, as far as a Dali style image. All right. So let's say we tinker with that and we can regenerate the image as many times as we want. We can provide more kind of guidance to uh, what kind of image we want to become a different visual style. But let's say now we're happy with this image. With one button click, I can say add to the recent blog post. It knows what blog post we were working on. It adds it. I can view it in HubSpot. And now we can see our article, The Impact of Generative AI on Instagram Marketing with a Dal Salvador Dali style uh, image of a retro phone. Okay. I have just one more thing, and I did not plan this. This is something I just literally just got done. The cool new thing I want to show you is this little microphone right here. So let me just show you. Create a report of companies added in Q4 summarized by industry. There you have it, folks. Not only can you chat, you can now actually talk to your CRM. All right, now I'm done for the demo. Thanks. That's a whirlwind tour of ChatSpot, and we were only able to really cover about 10% of what the application can do. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's moving along. It's getting uh, better every day. It's been the you know, most fun I've had working on a project and encoding uh, in a while. All right, so one of the big things um, we believe in at HubSpot is dreaming big, uh, but iterating small. And we have big dreams for ChatSpot in terms of where we can take it uh, in generative AI and create the world's first uh, smart CRM that you can actually chat with. But we like to iterate small, and that's why we're getting ChatSpot out there, even while it's in alpha, uh, because I love getting kind of user and customer feedback, and we'll update the software literally every day. It'll get um, better and smarter. Um, and so I invite you to come check it out. The water's warm, and the wait list is open. Uh, so I'll close with one last, uh, dad joke since I have, uh, since I have a quota. Uh, let's see. Let, uh, what did old McDonald say, uh, when he came across Chad GPT and Dolly 2? AI, AI. Oh. Anyway, please come say hi at chatspot.ai. Thanks for your time and thanks for indulging me. Um, hopefully uh, you'll have a good chance to check it out. Thank you.